Hi, today I have a artist trading card video for you where I'm using gouache paints for the background. I recently made a lot of gouache spreads in my sketchbook. Here you see some of them. I really enjoy this and I love that they are super matte when they are dry. It's a complete different against acrylic paints. Um, I'm using the Arteza gouache because I still have it. They sent the paints to me, I believe, about two years ago. And a lot of the tubes have dried out completely. So I, they are like a stone in the tube. And that's pretty annoying and I would not rebuy this paint. But the ones I have, um, I want to use. And I try to use them up pretty quickly so they don't get... Um, dried out. Um, here I'm making the background for the artist trading cards. I'm using the Canson XL watercolor paper because I really like it for paper crafting projects and also as artist trading cards it's pretty good as it's a heavyweight paper. I'm working intuitively with the paints on. I just spread them all over my page. I really enjoy how gouache paints are mixing and how they are layering. Um, it's a bit different between the different brands. I have one color from Schminke. It's just a white one, but um, the Schminke Academy gouache, for example, is hard to be reactivated once it's dry. So with kind of this gouache it would be easier to layer. What I like about the usual gouache that re-wets pretty good is that you can just throw them on a plate like this and then re-wet it and use them again. I thought I'm keeping this video in real time as well, also it takes a while until I've covered up the whole paper, but maybe you want to play along and you don't need to use gouache for that, you can just use acrylic paints. The difference is that the acrylic paints usually are more glossy than the gouache paints and of course they are not water soluble once they are dry. I prefer gouache paints in my sketchbook when I want to draw something over them because you can't go over acrylic paints with pencils. Well, it works a little but not very good. What I really enjoyed also are the Liquitex acrylic gouache paints. Um, I bought about five and tried them out already and I really love how they are looking when they are dry. And it's great that they are permanent.
I switched my brushes to create some different marks on the background. The artist trading cards are going to be pretty small, so I um, want to make sure that the background is a little bit busy, so I have also something going on when I cut those to size. To finish this abstract background up, I'm using again a mixture between yellow and I think it's a gray color and I just want to add in some more warmer tones. When the background is dry, I cut it down to artist trading cards, which measure 2.5 inches by 3.5 inches. And these are the ones I got from this sheet of paper and I really like how they turned out. And for today, I want to pick out three of them to create them or to finish them up and I will keep the rest in my stash. Um, and when I'm in the mood, I will just use it to create some more of these tiny cards. I do not really collect artist trading cards. I use them to put them in my happy mail, for example. I also don't trade them just because I don't have time for that. I want to use the craft collection stamp set. And as you see, I haven't unwrapped it. Um, I think they are here for about three weeks now, the clear stamps, and there are still a few sets I haven't used. What I love about the clear stamps is that they are adhering to an acrylic block on their own. Um, I feel that's much easier to use them. I feel they are a bit diff more difficult to stamp because they are so sticky and that sometimes causes that you don't get a super good image if your ink is not fully re-inked. So if the ink pad is running out, um, you will see uh, what my result will be with my tiny stays on, which is not the freshest. Yes, but that's not the result I wanted to have. I wanted a bit better. Um, I thought about using a different ink and I am trying the Distress ink because I think it doesn't dry as quick as the stays on. So I have some more time and the ink also has some more time to stay on my background. If you're using rubber stamps, you won't have that problem with the stickiness. That works out pretty good, I think. Um, because rubber is not sticky, so it will stamp with almost any ink on any surface. I now use the stays on again, but I don't know why. Ah, I think I just want to make the, 
that works a bit better because I think I have the distress ink. Uh, there was still something on the stamp. Um, I want to have um, the same ink on the same card, I think. On the third card I am trying the Distress Oxiding and this one works really great. I believe it's because of the pigment that is in the ink that makes it really easy to stamp. And here you can see all three cards and you can see the stays on was not the best. Um, the best was the Distress Oxide and I believe Versa Mark would have also worked fine. I just don't have any other color than black. What I'm missing is some pop of color and I really like the neon touches I have already on two of the cards and therefore now I'm using um, some neon pink ink from Synergy and just make some splatters over my cards. When the cards are dry, I'm coming back to do a little bit more stamping on the background because for the main images I decided to use some seahorses and I'm using the Distress Oxide, I believe it's Wild Honey, uh, yes, just to give the background a little bit more texture and I thought that the grungy swirls are a perfect pattern for an undersea scene. Here I'm just testing if my stamp is clean and it doesn't stamp in any mix of this of this color. I think I will also use a darker color with the swirls to give it a bit more contrast. And therefore I think I use the stays on again because that's the only really dark ink in blue I have. But as it's just for the background, I think it's fine. The the image doesn't have to be perfect and I think that's really good. I don't want the swirls to be dominating my cards. I switched to one of the Mix a Sentiment stamps just to give the third card kind of a different texture compared to the others. I really like when the edges are more defined for those cards and therefore I'm using the Distress Ink again and just ink up the edges and then I'm blending it a little bit with my finger.
I'm really happy with the backgrounds. What I want to do now is I want to arrange the seahorses. They are from the textured sea creatures stamp set and I have stamped them to some jelly prints there where I thought the colors are matching. I'm just sorting out which one I like on which card and then I will adhere those with some wet glue and I will also add a title to each of the cards. And here you can see the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope we will see us next time. I wish you a wonderful Easter weekend. Bye!